In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at and doing a tasting review of Campa Azul 1940 right here on the Tequila Hombre coming up next. Hello and welcome to this episode of the Tequila Hombre where today we're going to be taking a look at and doing a tasting review of Campa Azul 1940 Blanco and Repo. So if you're familiar with Campa Azul, you've probably heard of it before. It is a brand that comes out of NOM 1614, otherwise known as Producto Fino. It is um, located in Jesus Maria in the Los Altos region of Jalisco, which is pretty much the same area that um, El Pendio is located in. Now, Producto Fino is one of the largest producers of tequila in the area and that they have a huge, huge diffuser and they do produce uh, tequila and diffused juice that is sold to other people throughout the area. And they do bottle and, and do um, use their diffused juice for some brands that come out of the area as well. So what happened is basically the story that I've heard is that the Campazul 1940, the 1940 comes from the birth date of the founder. And um, they decided that they wanted to go old school and try to produce something again artisanal uh, instead of using the um, the diffuser that they have on premises. And so they came out with this brand showing that they can produce something supposedly that's good that um, is done right without any additives, um, not using diffused juice. And so um, they came out with this line, the Campa Azul 1940. Now, just as a side note as well, back before they got the diffuser, they actually produced tequila the right way at, at uh, Producto Fino. They have all kinds of equipment there um, for all different kinds of processes that they want to use. And so they pulled out some of the old school stuff for this particular brand. So the production on the 1940 starts with seven to eight year old agave grown from Iuelos in their fields there in the um, in the Jesus Maria area. They after the uh, harvest, the agave, they then um, cook them in brick ornos for 30 hours. And then after they're done cooking, they let them sit for another 24 hours to cool down and to finish cooking. And after they're done um, with it, the, in the Horno, the they then uh, extract the sugars from the agave fibers and then ferment in stainless steel tanks. Once fermentation is done, they then twice distill in stainless steel stills that are handmade by them. And the uh, Blanco is bottled at 40% alcohol by volume, and so is the Repo. But we'll get into the aging of the Repo um, after we're done with the tasting of the Blanco. So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into the tasting portion and see what this tequila is all about. All right, so let's pour a little bit in the glass. Now, this brand is additive free. They do pay for are part of the program. <laughs> The advertising program. Let's see. There we go. Screw cap, no cork. Not a big fan of that, but it is what it is. Pour that into the glass. And then looking at this in the glass. It coats the glass nicely. You can see the legs and tears forming on it. So it's gonna have a nice viscous mouthfeel to it, which is a good sign. Looking at the tequila itself, it's crystal clear. Dashes of light dashing through it. Looks amazing. All right, let's see what we get on the nose on this. Mm. Really nice, rich, sweet cinnamon and baking spices. This one's more on the herbal side. Like fresh cut flowers in there as well. It smells really nice. It smells nice. All right, let's see what we get on the flavor profile. This will be my first sip of 40% alcohol today, so I am going to acclimate my mouth to the... Uh... To the alcohol first. <laughs> I 
wait for the stinging to stop. All right, let's see what we get. Salud. It's got a decent mouth feel to it. Nothing spectacular, nothing super slick or oily, or super um, oily. Nice cinnamon and baking spices note up front. Followed by a um, really strong, almost like a grassy bitterness note that comes through on it. Followed by like a bitter anise note that comes from it. And then I get a lingering bitter note <clears throat> and on the finish, I don't get any sweet cinnamon on the finish. Nice cooked agave note up front, the cinnamon and baking spices. And then this bitter note that comes through, it's almost like vegetal bitterness and then it turns into like an anise licorice bitterness black licorice that just sits there on the palate for a while i'm not getting any more of that beautiful cinnamon sweet cinnamon notes from the cooked agave notes on it i just get this bitterness that rides it through to the finish and then the finish is kind of a medium finish but this bitterness note i'm not particularly caring for i don't um I'm not a big fan of of liquor of anise licorice notes that linger around this long, but this is very prevalent in this particular Blanco. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of this. If you're doing shots with it, um, it might be fine for shots because you know you don't sip it and hang it around. But um, but as far as a sipping Blanco uh, for the forty to forty five dollars, this was forty four ninety nine uh, at the store where I got it. Um, it's a fail for me. I, I'm not a fan. Um, so I would I would rate this one three agave. It's it's okay. It's not great. Um, it's not something I would buy and put on the shelf. So I think like a low three, like really bottom three, um, would be the rating on this. So that's a three agave. So let's check out the repo and see if that's any better. All right, so onto the Reposado. Now this Reposado uh, is aged in um, American white oak barrels that were previously used to age tequila in them. And uh, they were heavily used. So you can tell by the light color on this. <clears throat> so, and it's aged for just, un just under a year. <clears throat> Going to put some in the glass. Now, the nice thing about wood aging, when you when you wood age a uh, Blanco, like this one's got some major flaws to it that I'm not a big fan of. If when you age it, you can actually um, take out and and mask some of the flaws in the aging process. That's one of the beauties of of um, wood aging is it's really good at hiding flaws. So looking at this in the glass, it coats the glass beautifully. You can see the legs and tears forming on it. It is an extremely light straw color. <clears throat> Crystal clear though. Looks good. Let's see what we get on the nose on it. Very similar to the, to the Blanco. You get that sweet cinnamon and baking spices up front. A tiny hidden to vanilla. Some citrus. It smells nice. The Blanco smells nice. Not as much um, barrel notes as I would normally expect from a good repo, but it there's a little bit there. All right, let's see what we get on the uh, flavor profile.
Nice sweet cinnamon note up front. Nice soft vanilla note that comes after that. Really easy to drink. All that nasty bitterness that was in the Blanco has been aged out. It's gone. I'm not getting any of that residual bitterness on the tongue that we got from the Blanco. This is actually kind of enjoyable. Um, definitely something very easy to drink. Something I could definitely enjoy with a, uh, a good cigar. And I think this actually did a good job of hiding some of the flaws that are prevalent in the Blanco. So the... The Reposado, I'll actually give that one a four agave for that. Um, I think the Reposado is the star of the show between these two. Definitely easy to drink. Definitely um, a nice sipper. I definitely can enjoy it with a stogie. Um, and it's something that I will continue to drink. The Blanco is going to get trashed. I'm not going to keep that. I won't drink that. I don't like it. So... Um, so if you're looking to pick up the Composol 1940 and you have to have a bottle, I would recommend grabbing the Reposado. It's delicious. At least this, this bottle is. So there you go. If you like the information I share with you in this video, make sure you click the thumbs up and give it a like. If you're new to the channel, bienvenido, welcome. And hopefully you'll click that subscribe button right there and the notification bell next to it so you get notified every time we post a new review or informational video, educational video, it, all this great information that I give you to help you in making better choices uh, when selecting your tequila and agave spirits. And until next time, like I always say, life is too short to drink bad tequila, so keep following my reviews, keep watching my content, and you'll be in great shape. Salute. Bye, guys.